We're back with another UCL Fantasy team selection video ahead of match day nine. It's a very early one. There's plenty of time left for the deadline. So there might be a final team selection if a lot changes in terms of injuries, updates, which could also affect my transfer plans. But I'm going to be talking about my initial transfer choices as well as how I did in match day eight and also how my team lines up in match day nine without any transfers and then looking at the captaincy substitutions and all of that good stuff. So let's get straight into it. In match day eight, I scored 110 points in large part thanks to Robert Lewandowski and sometimes nailing that captaincy very early on in the week. And that's happened to me in back to back weeks now with Mares in match day seven and Lewandowski in match day eight. It just kind of frees you up a little bit. You don't have to worry about the captaincy and finding a return from one of your captains. And for those of you who captain Salah, a bit unfortunate. I never expected such a huge swing between the two. And then you are never really going to get another captain no matter on which day they played and who they played against. They were never going to match Robert Lewandowski's 24 points. That is a huge shame. The reason why I went with Lewandowski, and I said this in the stream throughout whenever people ask me, you know, who would you go for? It's because Lewandowski had that fixture against Salzburg. Salah was playing Inter Milan, tougher fixture on paper. And also Lewandowski's form has just been incredible all season. Salah's has dipped a little bit in recent weeks and months since returning from the African Cup of Nations. So I think it was a bit of an easy one for me, but sometimes I can understand why some of you would prefer Salah. And it makes complete sense. And he also earns more points you know from the clean sheet as well as scoring a goal you get an extra point as a midfielder now the rest of my team there were quite a few blanks actually in the final day or two so it started off really strongly I got 93 points I still had quite a few players left but Vlahovic didn't do too well Alvarez Haller all these players just didn't actually live up to the billing and if we look across the board you know there's a reason why I got over 100 points a lot of them did return Sane with a nice return there some of you captained him as well so still a good captaincy shout there Dan Juma got eight points with a late penalty against Juventus in their 3-0 win in Turin Thiago Silva with four points despite Chelsea not getting that clean sheet Rudiger with three which isn't too great Laporte there with eight points very happy with him and Edison one of my new signings with six points there and obviously it was a shame that Cancelo missed out I think he could have been in for a really big haul there in the second leg against Sporting Lisbon Trent got five points despite losing the clean sheet because he is a ball recovery machine so I'm hoping that he's fit in time for that Benfica game in the next round because otherwise I would have to get rid of him and ultimately I think he's a great long-term option and you could see Liverpool reaching the final potentially even winning the whole thing Sula I was very lucky with and sometimes in fantasy games you need luck because Sula actually came off I think three minutes minutes before Bayern Munich conceded so he notched those ball recovery points and also the clean sheet points and got nine overall that is very lucky but sometimes in FPL I find myself sometimes on the other end of the spectrum in terms of luck so it kind of balances out and sometimes you just need things to go your way Vlahovic blanked as well pretty surprising I thought Juventus would score and it would be Vlahovic involved and there you go if you look at my team now I've got four eliminated players so Vlahovic, Alvarez, Haller and also Onana. So basically, two of my forwards are gone. I need to reshape my forward line completely, and I could also downgrade or make a change in my goalkeeper position, maybe get another good goalkeeper on my bench like Mendy, Vlakodimos, etc., or just downgrade, find a little bit extra money there, and then focus on the rest of my team. So I'm going to be explaining how I line up in match day nine, what my team is looking like, my captaincy plans, and also then talking about my transfers that I have in mind right now. I could get away with making no transfers, but remember we have five free transfers heading into the next round. You might as well use them. And that's why I was talking about, I think the wild card is best used in the first leg of the quarterfinals or the semifinals when a lot of these teams and players you have are eliminated. As you can see, my entire bench are wiped out. And I still think it's actually a really good thing to have as many options as possible because if a certain player blanks, you have the luxury in UCL Fantasy to make substitutions. So remember that. The same goes for the captaincy. That's why I've gone for Salah right now as my captain. And if he were to blank, if you look at the date here, he plays on the 5th of April. And if he blanks, I can then switch it to Robert Lewandowski. And there you go. Very simple. But... As things stand, this is how my team is looking like. Edison in goal. And I don't mind double City defence against Atletico Madrid. But I also want to get Joao Cancelo back into my team. And the problem there is a triple up in Manchester City defence I think might be a bit too excessive. Even if Atletico Madrid will probably sit back and try to get a nil-nil draw or basically nullify Manchester City and maybe the citizens could keep a clean sheet or two across these quarterfinals. So that's something I have to think about. Which defender do I get rid of for Joao Cancelo? Do I go for a triple up in City? Do I remove a double up in Chelsea and just go for one? They're playing Real Madrid. Do I get rid of Trent Alexander-Arnold? That will be heavily dependent on if he's available against Benfica. 
and I think that Liverpool have a really good chance of a clean sheet. Probably the most likely team to keep a clean sheet across these two games. And then I've got Nicolas Sula against Villarreal. I think having one Bayern Munich defender or goalkeeper is fine. I wouldn't really go overboard with them. With Alfonso Davis returning now, and he could be back for match day 9 or maybe match day 10, he could be a great option. He was showing some great consistency in the Champions League this season. Sula gets those ball recoveries. Obviously very fortunate with that 9-point return in match day 8, but he is a good option nonetheless. As for my midfield, I like Mahrez a lot, but he is facing Atletico Madrid, and in order to make other transfers, I might need to downgrade him in order to facilitate those other moves. Dan Juma, for me, is the best midfielder around 7 million or under, probably the best asset around that price, to be honest. He's been sensational all season, so consistent, probably Villarreal's best player, and I'm very happy to have had him for as long as I have, and he's one of the main reasons why I'm in a good position right now. Sane has been great all season. He had a bit of a dip in the Bundesliga and even in recent Champions League matches, but he showed his class in match day eight, and that's why I never wanted to get rid of him, and I preferred him over Riyad Mahrez. Mohamed Salah is Salah, but at the same time, I don't think you need Salah, which sounds crazy, but it's not like in FPL where he's so consistent and he just shows his class most weeks. In Champions League, sometimes, I think you can cover him with other players. And when you have someone like Lewandowski, who's probably a better UCL fantasy option than Salah anyway, I just think it kind of reduces the need for the Egyptian. But having said that, he's still a great option, probably Liverpool's best player, and I think he is worth having in your team. But I'm just saying he's not as crucial as he would be in other fantasy formats and in the Premier League. As for Lewandowski, the only way he would actually be removed from my team is if Bayern Munich get knocked out or he's injured. I think he's going to stay in my team for as long as possible, and he's just a great and safe captaincy option. Very rarely blanks, and his ceiling is so high. He scores so many goals, Bayern Munich creates so many chances, and as for those players that got eliminated, I expected a bit more from Haller and Blachowicz in the second leg, but Haller had a great Champions League campaign. Onana actually made a big mistake for that goal for Benfica, and they got knocked out. Alvarez was always bench fodder so now I'm going to be showing you how my team would look like with these new transfers I've got five transfers in mind but one of them is going to be heavily dependent on Trent's fitness and also my plans for the defense do I want to go for a double up in Chelsea triple up in City do I want to kind of balance out a little bit more and it ultimately depends on the news we get over the next week or two any further injuries and illnesses etc and also the form of these teams heading into match day nine we're going to get one set of Premier League or La Liga Bundesliga etc matches which will help us to to then clarify and determine which are the best teams and players to go for in UCL Fantasy. My current plan is to make these five transfers, get rid of Riyad Mahrez for Kingsley Coman, who's been so consistent since match day three, getting six points and above every single time. His ceiling isn't amazingly high, but he's so consistent, and that is very important for UCL Fantasy. It also saves me a bit of money, and Riyad Mahrez is coming up against a tough and resolute Atletico Madrid defence. I wouldn't change anything else in my midfield. Alvarez would only become a midfield around six million, who mainly revolves around ball recovery, so Rodri, Fabinho, etc. I'm not a big fan of the options around that price. I can always go to a 4.5 million midfielder, but I only gain 0.1 million in terms of value and not much in terms of points or minutes. And as for the forward line, I talked about this, both Vlahovic and Haller are eliminated, so a rehaul in my forward line is needed. I've gone for Karim Benzema, who's one of the highest scoring players this season after his hat-trick against Paris Saint-Germain. So the only Real Madrid player I'd heavily consider is Karim Benzema, but let's wait and see how he recovers from his injury. He missed out in El Clasico in the 4-0 defeat to Barcelona. I've also gone for Luis Diaz. I'm not a huge fan, actually, of the remaining forwards. There's Thomas Muller. I'd love to have him. He's probably my ideal third forward, but I would need to find more money across the rest of my team. So maybe instead of Kingsley Coman, I could go for a midfielder around 7 million like Bernardo Silva or Jorginho, but I'm not really feeling it, and I'd rather go for something like this. Luis Diaz could still come good in the Champions League. He hasn't really done it for Liverpool yet, and it also depends on the lineup. So Liverpool versus Benfica and City versus Atletico, we get the lineups before the match day nine deadline passes, and that will ultimately determine my final transfers. So I'm probably going to wait until the final hour when we get the lineup and then confirm any of these transfers. I would encourage all of you to do the same. Remember, price rises don't happen until the deadline passes. So there's no need really to make early transfers. Looking at the back line, 
I am looking to make a goalkeeper transfer just to save me 0.5 million and just go for one keeper in Edison, who I trust. City didn't keep a clean sheet throughout the entire group stages, but back-to-back -back clean sheets since I brought Edison in in match day seven and eight. Very happy with him. He is facing Atletico. I would expect one clean sheet out of the two. I'd be very surprised if Edison didn't keep one clean sheet, and I'd also be surprised if he kept two, if you catch my drift there. I want to get Joao Cancelo back, but it just depends who I get him in for. Would it be for Laporte and stick to a double up in City defence rather than a triple up, which could be very excessive? Do I actually get rid of a Chelsea defender instead? Stick with one Chelsea defender who's going to be up against Karim Benzema anyway. I've got both of them in my team. There's a bit of a clash there. Do I get rid of Sula? I mean, I would like to have one Bayern Munich defensive coverage, so I might keep him in the end. And he is a pretty good UCL fantasy asset with those ball recoveries. Trent has the attacking threat, but also the ball recoveries. And that's why I really like him. But if he's still injured and misses out, then it makes sense to do a like-for-like -like swap. And it also gives me... 1.4 million more in terms of my budget because Laporte is only 5.3 million and in that case I would have 2 million left in the bank and I could upgrade Kingsley Coman or at least keep Riyad Mahrez in the first place and focus on upgrading Alvarez to a midfielder around 6.6 .6 million and I'd actually be 0.1 million off from getting Jorginho so let me know what you think of these transfer plans down in the comment section below. Transfers like Cancelo and Benzema I'm quite confident about. It's just who do I get Cancelo in for? And as for my midfield, I wouldn't mind keeping Riyad Mahrez, but I also see the kind of benefit to getting a Kingsley Coman or someone else. I don't like too many of the forwards, except for Thomas Muller. I look at Diaz, Jota. They're pretty good, but they're going to share minutes, and they haven't been that good in the Champions League this season. But... There are still quite a lot of options out there in the forward line, but a lot of them, like Haller, have been eliminated. Same with Haaland. They are so consistent and reliable. We don't have them to depend on. Also Mbappe. So we have fewer options up front, more options in the midfield, it looks like, compared to previous years. So it's going to be very interesting to see how everything shapes out. I might still change a few aspects as well in my transfer plans and it ultimately depends on the lineups we get in the Tuesday matches. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see the Bayern Munich versus Villarreal lineups and also Chelsea Madrid before the deadline passes, but I could still get a good second goalkeeper, but I just think there's too much money. Having Edison who's already 6 million, then even getting Vlakodimos, getting Ruli, who's probably not going to keep a clean sheet anyway against Bayern Munich. And do I really go for Mendy and Neuer? And just a word of warning, let's look at the fixtures and how they line up. So on the Tuesday, We've got the City Atletico game and Benfica Liverpool. Make sure you don't have two goalkeepers from two teams that feature on the Tuesday. So if you have Edison and Allison, you're not really going to benefit from that. You know, if you want to have two goalkeepers, two playing goalkeepers, it's best to have keepers playing on different days. Otherwise, you don't really benefit from the substitutions and you might even bench the keeper who ends up keeping the clean sheet or more points than the one you actually started. And I would also recommend trying to balance your team out a little bit more. So try to have some players who play on Tuesday as well as those on Wednesday. So it gives you that flexibility to then bring these players on if needed, if some of your players blank on the Tuesday. So it's really important to kind of balance your teams out, have some City players, maybe even one or two Atletico. And Benfica, I wouldn't expect them to go through, but if you do think they will go through, then fair enough. I would probably stack up on Liverpool. Robertson could be a really good Trent replacement, although I think Robertson isn't as good as Trent in UCL Fantasy because of ball recoveries. Trent as a ball recovery machine. Chelsea Madrid, you want to have maybe a few players from each team, mainly from Chelsea potentially. Benzema is the standout from that fixture for sure. And Villarreal Bayern, as much as Villarreal have been really impressive this season, I would target Bayern Munich there. So try to balance your team out and do not go heavily overboard on one team with five, six players from one club. Try to balance it out. I think it would be in your best interest, especially if you don't have your wildcard available. And speaking of the wildcard, there will be a best wildcard and a best limitless team video coming within the next week or two. So stay tuned and thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a single upload. It'd be much appreciated. It helps the channel to grow. And you can also join the Discord server and join our great community there. You can become a Patreon or a channel member and get exclusive early access to all my videos. There is an FPL and UCL Fantasy playlist with all the live streams and videos we've done throughout the season. And there's plenty more to come in the business end of the season. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM. So all the very best of luck. Enjoy the football as well as the international break. Be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Which players have we not talked about in this video that are worth highlighting and some of the best players 
that might not get too much attention. Maybe Nunez from Benfica. There's quite a lot of options in UCL Fantasy and it's quite different to FPL where the template isn't as strong in this fantasy format as it is in others. So that's a really interesting thing about it. Ball recoveries obviously changes the entire dimension of these defensive midfielders, centre-backs and defenders and it should be a great end to the season. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.